Hey there folks, I'm Mark in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. So I'll be honest, I am so happy this week's a bit of a slower one. I just got back from Sonic Temple in Columbus, Ohio. I'll have a recap slash review video dropping in a couple of days, and there'll be plenty of other videos that I'll pop up in. Spoilers. And when you consider that last Friday was one of the biggest released weeks of the month, I've got a lot to catch up on in terms of album reviews. So the relative lack of stories here is kind of encouraging. Well, I say that even with an eye to our top 10, where for another week, Old Town Row by Lil Nas X and Billy Ray Cyrus holds at number one, mostly on the back of insane streaming and enough radio inertia to be rather difficult to unseat. But the challengers, they just keep on coming. And to this day, this might be one of the meatiest. A new entry at number two, I Don't Care by Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber. Now look, I'll have much more to say about this song's relative quality later on, but I will say it's got the sort of megastar team up that has tremendous sales, can make a streaming run, and has been giving the sort of preferential radio treatment that few acts can get in pop. Now, granted, I've been saying that about a lot of singles the past month or so, and we haven't quite seen a breakthrough yet, so we'll have to see what legs it has here. Now, I do find it amusing that a song like Sucker by the Jonas Brothers actually advanced up to number three because, despite peaking in radio, it's got enough traditional sales to prop it up. Even better is Bad Guy by Billie Eilish picking up big to number four because she had a good sales week, streaming is incredibly consistent, and she finally got the radio traction she deserves. Still lagging considerably, but it'll be interesting to see if she catches up there, or if a small run is possible. This also allows for a small recovery for WOW by Post Malone up to number five, inertia across the board, albeit with weakening sales and wavering airplay, and for Sunflower by Post Malone and Sway Lee at number six. A lot of similar reasons, just swap out stronger streaming for weaker radio. And then making a hard return to the top 10 at number 7, thanks to its continued radio strength and little else, we got Dancing with a Stranger by Sam Smith and Normani. But it's kind of hard for me to give this a ton of credit when it's faced with the odd collapse for me by Taylor Swift featuring Brendan Urey down to number 8. And I want to give this some scrutiny, because while radio is solid, it doesn't quite seem to have the gas that it should, and sales, on-demand streaming, and YouTube are all down. Not quite you would expect from Taylor Swift making her big comeback, so I'd be a little bit concerned there if I was on her team. Hell, a big factor for this probably circles back to Talk by Khalid, which is up to number 9. Riding consistent radio and actually passing Taylor Swift there, and in streams, only lagging on the sales. Hell, and finally we got Still in the Top 10 Without Me by Halsey. And as soon as something that's bigger than it comes in, its losses across the board will likely push it out of the Top 10. And and on that fun topic, let's go to our losers and dropouts. And we had a few considerable exits which clinched their year-end spots. Close to Me by Ellie Goulding, Diplo and Sway Lee, You Say by Lauren Daigle, and Swervin by A Boogie with the Hoodie and 6 9 yeah, I'm not happy about that one either. And as for our losers, most are as we expected. Boy With Love by BTS featuring Halsey continued to tumble down to 61. Off the debut, If I Can't Have You by Shawn Mendes slid down to 13. And Homicide by Logic featuring Eminem down to 21. And from there, a few of our losers are kind of scattered. Clout by Offset and Cardi B slid down to 55. And Night Shift by John Party went to 68. But the biggest loser here might be Lil Uzi Vert with Sanguine Paradise down to 59. And that's a wrap. Back to 97. If he's looking for momentum going down to any release of Eternal Ataki, that is not good. Right now, I'm just realizing that Logic didn't have any new entries off of any potential album bomb, so yeah, Logic might be the biggest loser there. But where things get a little bit more diffuse is looking at our returns and gains. And in that former category, while I'm not that surprised that SOS by the late Avicii featuring Aloe Black is back at 94, I am a little bit surprised that Rule the World by 2 Chains featuring Ariana Grande is back at 98. I guess it's had enough radio behind the scenes to hold its own, but I doubt it'll gain that much after a run this many weeks after its release as a single. In the same messy situation, I'll admit I'm shocked that Put a Date on It by Yo Gotti featuring Lil Baby is rebounding to 62. This song has bounced all over the charts, and I'm surprised it's made the run it has, especially here. But outside of that, 
I'm not gonna say I'm surprised that Hey Look Ma, I Made It by Panic of the Disco is picking up faster to 41, Love Ain't by the Eli Young Band's up to 50, or even Love Someone by Brett Eldridge's up to 78, even though I'm not complaining about that last one. But the biggest surge came for Beer Never Broke My Heart by Luke Combs, and look, I might be underwhelmed by the song, and I've seen a swath of thing pieces surrounding how much success he's found on big sales, but I think more attention should be paid to his on-demand streaming and surprisingly decent YouTube as a country act that's shunning the easy pop crossover. Because if Nashville clues in that there's actually money in this approach, who knows, they might throw more support to more neo-traditional acts who can play in a similar lane. So even if I don't really care for his music, I kind of appreciate the impact. There might be something there. But now we've got a pretty sparse list of new arrivals, thank God. But starting off with a pleasant surprise in number 100, Juice by Lizzo. Well, about time this broke through. I said a week or so ago that this was the Lizzo song that I expected to eventually chart, and I'm pretty pleased that it finally did. Mostly because of the newest pop-leaning incarnation of her sound, and it actually leans into her strengths the best. The breezy, echoing guitar grooves off the twisting rattle of the percussion and the horns. It's got the sort of atmosphere and flair off the sinuous bass, and it's easily the most comfortable that Lizzo has ever sounded on production like this. And it's got a lot of supple support for her huge charisma. And the content plays with that swagger and ego pretty well, where it doesn't even need to lean into the taking your girl or guy mold, but actually makes the assertion that it could happen, and she might not even be interested if it does. That's a level of confidence that's rarely done well or convincingly, and I honestly think she nails it. So yeah, it's a great song, and while I've got no idea how much traction it'll actually hold long term, kinda hope it sticks around. Like more than her other hits. Number 95, Terre Robore by Nikki Jam and Ozuna. Look, I don't want to be an ass about this, but I swear I've heard dozens of reggaeton songs over the past couple of years on this show, and unless you've got some production element or vocal choice that goes awry, I barely remember them year after year. I imagine if I spoke Spanish it might be a little different, but what the hell am I even supposed to say about this? The percussion line feels like the exact same blocky clunker with desaturated melody with auto-tune crooning from Nicky Jam and Ozuma that I've heard so many times before. Not helped by content that went translated seems to imply that these guys are really trying to steal this girl and get really clingy about it too, not even wanting giving her the space to breathe. And while you might be able to convince me that Nikki Jam could be slick or charismatic, Ozuna's whinging has been annoying for years now and this does not improve it. In other words, not all that good or memorable. Next, number 85, Someone You Loved by Lewis Capaldi. I was getting kind of used to being someone you loved. Okay, so I've seen this song squatting on top of the UK charts for what feels like months now, and I've deliberated putting it on this show as a world hit before, and then every time I'd listen to it, I think there has to be something better than this, and I'd go with that instead. And the issue here is pretty straightforward. For a somber, heartfelt piano ballad where Capaldi's trying to split the difference between Ed Sheeran and Hosier, but not quite nail either of their charisma, the post-breakup language doesn't really reflect the gravitas that it's trying for. I mean, sure, getting kind of used to being someone you loved, it's colloquial, it's intimate, it's honest at least, but when you proceed it with lines like, this all or nothing way of loving got me sleeping without you, it just feels kind of dicey because that can be taken as she wasn't ready to go all out with him, or that he wasn't ready, which might actually make more sense with the muted surprise that runs through the entire song. And in that case, it feels like a more melodramatic version of Passenger's Let Her Go, with a lack of greater lyrical detail not helping matter. I don't know, I get why a drippy song like this might do well, especially in the UK, but can we not really make this a hit stateside? Please? Number 73, Soltara by Lune, Daddy Yankee, and Bad Bunny. Okay, see, I might complain about reggaeton, but at least when I see Daddy Yankee, there's an expectation that'll be upbeat and wild and potentially fun, and yet it doesn't stop the squawking melody to being utterly formless and the conventional percussion to be boring as tar. It also doesn't help matters that Lune is by far the least interesting part of the song with his vocals, because Bad Bunny and Daddy Yankee have the melody and the presence to just run away with this brand of hookup for this single girl who's running wild, and I swear I've heard these lyrics dozens of times before. I mean, I mean, 
they've got more charisma than Azuna and Nikki Jam, but again, it's not remotely interesting, and you will probably forget it once you heard it, so... Yeah, let's move on. Number 51, Triggered Freestyle by Janae Aiko. So I'll be blunt. I'm legit shocked that Janae Aiko debuted a song this high on the Hot 100. I know she's got a following, and I've been a fan for years now, but her albums and previous singles haven't really moved the needle in the Hot 100 outside of post to be, especially with her as a solo artist. So to see what she's described as a freestyle hit the Hot 100 did catch me off guard. And on some level, it does feel like a freestyle. The structure is loose, the conflicted flow is genuine love and bitter anger, it's free-flowing as she constantly tries to tamp down on her emotions emotions, even as the threats are both veiled and unveiled, all of which can feel pretty jarring when sung as prettily as they are. But even still, the percussion feels ramshackle against the watery keys, and even the trap progressions can't hold all that stable for long. There is a lot of emotion being held back here. Of course, the larger question is whether or not she's singing about Big Sean, who she's frequently denied and that she's speaking to the larger emotions, which could well refer to a lot of people, and I would be inclined to believe her as presenting this as a single. But but I have the feeling that the album context, both from 2088 and Trip, might shift some of that overall opinion. Because there's not many people to which a mingled blend of love, hate, regret, and curdled respect might apply from Jeanne Aiko. I mean, we'll have to see, but as it is, yeah, you know what? I kind of dig this. Definitely want to hear more. And finally, number two, I Don't Care by Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber. You're making me feel maybe I am somebody. So let me start by saying a few things. Not only does this collaboration not surprise me given the massive success of Love Yourself, but both these guys have a petty streak a mile wide. If they were going to indulge in rampant egotism, I might be able to see the appeal. But that's not what this song is, bizarrely. It's since the jittery love song where these guys are overly anxious and wishing they could get the hell out of the party where they hate everyone there. I mean, that was good when Alessia Cara did it, but I've kind of gotten sick of it since. AJR kind of spoiled that well. But when this girl is there, they're having fun, at least. And the weird thing with this is how the problems, they start cropping up almost immediately. Why make this a duet at all when there's no significant interplay in the lyrics? Especially when you know that they're not singing about each other other, although it might be funnier if they were. Why are the vocal lines so compressed against those tinny keys at the top of the piano that has them playing in their most boring possible registers and still not sounding that good? Why is the entire song set up to be anthemic but doesn't remotely match the tense anxiety that's the emotional core? Something that the smoked out sample from Alessia Cara's here, at least she understood that. And why are Justin Bieber and Ed Sheeran trying to lean on some utterly unconvincing, not fitting in relatability when they're superstars that have been at their most compelling Ryan on big emotions and raw ego. If anything, this feels more like an unfinished demo, more coasting on the name value slapping two big collaborators together than anything with a cohesive idea or consistent emotionality. And while there are some elements of catchiness, with nothing close to a genuine groove, I can imagine this falling short if the fame doesn't cut it. And with Taylor Swift underperforming off of a similar underwhelming comeback, that could well be possible so I don't really expect this to stick around that much. And yeah, it's not a terrible week, but I can't really call it a good one either, especially that I'm gonna give I Don't Care by Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber the worst of it here. It's not terrible, I've certainly covered worse, but it is absolutely mediocre and rife with issues that I can see it holding it back in the months ahead, if it even lasts that long. But on the flip side, Honestly, I think I might like Janae's song more for the potential to be on the album than what it is as a whole here, which is why I'm giving Best of the Week to Juice by Lizzo, which can easily stand alone. Now, next week, honestly, I expected Logic to do something this week, so uh, given that's not happening, but the way Tyler the Creator is doing on streaming, he could well have an album bomb for the first time, and that would be fascinating to see. So stay tuned for that, but until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown in association with Spectrum Pulse.